Some push for what they need. Some push for what they want. Some people, like Peter J. Novins, just push. If they do it hard enough and long enough, something might just push back from the Twilight Zone. Johnny, give me another one here, will you? Jamie late again? Hmm. I don't know, maybe it's across town traffic. Maybe it's... Johnny, give me the phone, will you? Sure. Thanks. Johnny, can I get some more ice over here, please? Thank you. So how long have you been married? Dialed the number I know best instead of Jamie's office. I dialed my own number. Did you ever do that? Hello. Johnny, honey, I need that eyes real quick. I'm sorry. I must have dialed the wrong number. What number did you want? Right. Klondike oh, 5, 6189. This is Klondike 5, 6189. Who are you calling? Nah, I must have dialed wrong. This can't be Klondike 5, 6189. Yeah? That's the number you've reached. Who did you want? I wasn't calling anybody at this number. Watch Ice Wait a minute. Are you sure this is Klondike 56189? <laughs> I think I know my own number, pal. Who are you? I'm Peter Novins. Who are you? I'm Peter Novins. This isn't funny. You sound just like me. Did dial my own number. You're in my apartment. What the hell are you doing in my apartment? My apartment. What a moron gag. Freddy, is that you? Who is this? Maury, is that you? Alan? Uh, nobody can imitate my voice like you. Come, Alan. Come on, man. Don't, Don't jerk, jerk my, my chain. Cha Wait a minute. I'm here. You can't be... I can't be in my own apartment. Skip Fisher's father, what did he do for a living? My God, Skip Fisher. I haven't thought about him in years. Skip's father was a fireman. Until he quit his job to go work for the Studebaker dealership. I don't believe this. This can't, this, this can't be happening. Uh, you okay, Mr. Novins? Johnny, if, uh, Jimmy shows up, tell her I couldn't wait. Tell her I, uh, if, tell her I had to go. Well, what, what, don't you, don't you want to leave a note or, or, or something? Hey, can't you see I got a problem here? Can't you see I got a situation here? Can't you just tell her? not happening. Who are you, huh? I'm Peter J. Novins. It's me. Honest to God. You're not real. What do you want me to say to that? I know I'm me. And what are you? <laughs> I'm going to do something about this. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. How about if I come over there and kick your butt out into the street? I thought about that. But do you really think you want to risk it? What? You think this happens every day? You think that what we have here is ordinary? 
What does that got to do with me coming back to the apartment I live in? Did you ever hear that two objects can't occupy the same space at the same time? Basic. We can't both be Novans, can we? <laughs> Come on. What now? More threats? Look, this is crazy. Even if all this is true, even if we're both Novans, there's nothing that says we can't both exist, can't both lead happy, separate lives. Who are you kidding? You can't lead a happy life by yourself. How are you gonna do it knowing I'm over here living your life too? You never were much one for sharing. What do you mean I can't lead a happy life? What do you know about it? What do I know about your life? Who do you think you're talking to? This is me, Novins. Me. There is nothing wrong with my life. Not one thing, nothing. So what's so wrong with it, wise guy? Everything. Just about every piece of it stinks on ice. The sad part is, you know it. You still won't make repairs. Well, that changes. From today on, that changes. If only one of us is gonna make it, it's gonna be me. And just how do you propose to do that? You're out there, locked down. I'm in here. At home. Safe. I can continue to do my work. I can continue to lead my life. Yeah? Well, look at it this way. You're trapped in there. Locked away inside three and a half rooms. And once you step out, and you will, I'm going to be waiting to step back in. And once I'm in, I'm going to stay in. I'll tell the landlord an imposter is trying to break into my apartment. And that is how I propose to do it. Close out my checking account, please. Okay. Take the balance and a cashier's check. Will you be transferring those funds to a different account? No, I'll be transferring them to another bank, actually. Oh, I hope you weren't dissatisfied with our service. No. No, uh, nothing like that. It's a personal matter. Yeah, you heard me. I've had just about as much of your incompetence as I can take. Come in. Your groceries stink, your prices are outrageous, and your delivery boy's got the brains of a russet potato. Oh, yeah? Good. It suits me just fine. <laughs> you sure you don't want any lunch? No, tea will be fine. Listen, I got kind of an upset stomach. Maybe you can run out and give me some Gaviscon. Here, keep the change. Hey, no problem. Be right back. How'd you enjoy your first day being in my skin? Fine. How'd you enjoy your first day out of it? Listen, friend, I've got your act covered. The checking account is gone. No more groceries will be delivered. So you're gonna have to go out and get some food. And when you do, I will be there. You're a little late. I've already been out. I've got enough groceries to last through a siege. Remember the $200 I hid in the jewelry box? Damn. I'm doing some figuring. Remember that old Jack London novel, Star Rover? How he used astral projection to get out of his body? Well, I think that's what happened to me. 
I said you went while I was sleeping, maybe. And I decided I'm me. You're just a little piece of me that wandered off. I get along just fine without you. <laughs> Great theory, man. But try this one. Remember the weekend? I went to Kenny's lab and he took that trillion photo of my my aura. Well, this is my theory. Somehow something something got something got out. I don't know. Some part of me. Some uh, something. We both sound pretty lame, don't we? Mother called this morning. Oh, great. What you want? She said she knew you lied about having to leave Florida early when you were down there visiting. She called here. The answering service gave her the number of the hotel in Miami you checked into. Well, wonderful. Look, you, you know how she is. I was going buggy. I mean, what was I supposed to do? It was one day, for God's sake. She said she loved you. And she forgave you. And that all she wants is for you to share her life with her. Well, I suppose you didn't do anything to make her feel any better. On the contrary. I did something you never would have done. I made arrangements for her to come here and live with me. What? Are you out of your bloody mind? How am I going to take care of that old woman in New York? I've got work to do. I've, I've got places to go. I have a life to lead. Not anymore, you don't, you pathetic loser. Maybe you can live with your bad gut feelings about her, but not me. She arrives next week. You're crazy! Yeah. And you just lost your mother. Chew on that one. This isn't going to work, is it? My God. You sound terrible. Just a, a touch of the flute would have passed. We can't go on like this. She was living half a life. We have to work this out. Yeah. I know. I've been thinking. Maybe... <coughs> Maybe the one who deserves to be Peter Novins should be the one to take over the life. Does that sound reasonable to you? I don't know. Just uh, every Everybody deserves to go on living. Spare me the philosophy, will you, Novins? You don't believe that for a second. You're a misanthrope. You hate people. Not true. I just hate some of the things people do. Like guys who put Save the Wheel bumper stickers on their cars and then buy their wives for coats. Hypocrite. You have the gall to complain about that and you took on that Cumberland account? That's another thing entirely. Sure it is. You know damn well Cumberland's going to strip mine the guts out of that county and they'll get away with it that publicity campaign you dreamed up. Great PR man, Novins. 
but you've got the ethics of a weasel. For God's sakes, what was I supposed to do? I have to make a living, don't I? If I didn't do it, somebody else would have. I suppose you would have turned it down. That's exactly what I did, old buddy. I called him this morning and told him to stuff that account up their noses. Head is pounding. Why are you doing this to me? You got it all wrong, Novins. You did this to yourself. down a little bit. I talked to Patty yesterday. I tried to apologize for the way you treated her. It wasn't easy. She really hates you. Is... Then I guess you deserve it, don't you? Is that... Is that true? True, Novins. Flat true. You went after Patty. You got her. Leave her old man. You set her and her kid up in that apartment, I... and as soon as you got bored with her, you... I remember it that way. No. Of course you don't. I told Jamie last night. We talked about our, our future. Mm -hmm. We really took some fast talking, man. She was starting to hate you, too. But it's gonna work. I'll make it work. I don't intend to have any more years like I've had in Opens. From this point on, it changes. I'll name the first one after you, Peter. starting to clear up outside. They gave me the key at the front desk. Look terrible, Peter. Yes. I have quite been feeling myself these days. <laughs> That's good. Trying to come to terms with it. That'll help. I remember the archetypes from young. Being my shadow. Or my persona. Or anima. When I first got loose, I uh, guess I was the shadow. Now I'm the self. Now I'm becoming the shadow. No. You're becoming a memory. That's pretty ungracious. I was sick for a long time, Peter. I don't know what the trigger was that broke us apart, but it happened. I can't be sorry. If it hadn't, I'd have been you till I died. It would have been a lousy life and a miserable death. Too late to worry about it now. Things going well with Jamie? Yeah. Mom comes in Tuesday. I uh, spoke to her doctor, as they say. 
She doesn't have very long. But for whatever she's got, I'm determined to make up for the last 25 years since Dad died. Just kidding. Listen. Just came by to, uh... See if there's anything you wanted. Anything you would have... done if things had been different. on your mind. That's good. Thanks. Anything else? Well, I have to go. Yeah. Well, take care of you, Ann. J. Novens, both victor and victim of a brief struggle for custody of a man's soul. A man who lost himself and found himself on a lonely battlefield somewhere in the Twilight Zone.